It's the late 1800s. Steam is rolling in the station and the whistles are blowing announcing the arrival of a new steam engine. Welcome to Railroad Rivals. Railroad Rivals is a tile laying game for one to five players from Forbidden Games. Players will take turns laying down city tiles, claiming routes, moving product, and claiming stock shares. Will you be able to create a railroad empire that even Cornelius Vanderbilt would be jealous of? Or will you be left on the station platform in a cloud of steam? Let's find out in Railroad Rivals. Each player takes locomotives of their chosen color and the corresponding character card and places it near them. Place the score track and stock value tracker near the board. Place the stock markers near the stock value tracker. Take the Chicago, St. Louis, and Cincinnati city tiles, shuffle them, and place one randomly in the middle of the table. This is your starting tile. Place the number of cubes designated in the rule booklet in the goods bag. Draw cubes equal to the numbers surrounding the tile and place them on the tile. Shuffle the two leftover city tiles into the rest of the city tiles and deal two to each player face down. Place the rest of the stack face down to create a draw pile. Shuffle the stockpile and place it face down in the stack next to the city tiles. Shuffle each player's character card and deal them out randomly to create the initial player order. The first player will be the card on the left, followed by the second and third players, respectively. Place the first player's locomotive on the 6, the second player's on the 8, the third player's on the 10, and so on, continuing by placing markers every two spots on the tracker. Now, you are ready to play! Rivals is played in four phases. Draw tiles and bid for turn order, draft tiles, place a city tile, and deliver a good. During the draw tiles phase, draw the number of tiles equal to the number of players from both the city stack and the stock stack and lay them face up within reach of all players. For example, we are playing a three player game, so I will draw three city tiles and three stock tiles and lay them face up. These tiles will be available for this round of play. If at any point you don't have enough city tiles left in the draw pile for all players to get one, discard the remaining city cards and each player will receive two stock tiles instead. In this setup, you randomly decide the first player, but in the subsequent rounds, players must bid for the first player spot. Starting with the last player, the player with the character card farthest to the right, and continuing left, Players will bid points. In order to bid, you must bid higher than the previous bid and have enough points to back it up. If bidding gets too high, or you don't have enough points, or you just don't want to, you can pass. Once all but one player has passed, the player left standing will move their locomotive back the number of spots equal to their highest bid on the score tracker. Then, they will move their character card to the first player spot and slide the other cards down. The starting player will choose either a city tile or a stock tile from the available face-up tiles. Play continues in the order of the character cards. Once everybody has made their first selection, players will select a tile from the type that they did not select in the first round. For example, if I chose to take a city tile in the first round, I must take a stock tile during the second round. Keep an eye on the rising stocks. These tiles can give you quite a few points at the end of the game. Starting with the first player, each player will take turns placing their city tile. City tiles must be placed next to cities already in play. Each city tile has the names of famous railroads on some or all of their sides. In order to place a city tile, the tile you are laying must have a railroad that matches one of the railroads on the city tile already in play. For example, the Chicago tile has the Illinois Central Railroad on it. I can lay my New Orleans tile here lining up the two Illinois Central Railroads. Once you have matched up railroads, you have created a link. Place one of your locomotives on the link. Draw the number of goods equal to the number listed in the corners of the tile you just placed and place them on the corresponding city tile. A few more rules. You cannot stack tiles on top of each other. If you lay a tile and it has more than one matching railroad, place your locomotive on all matching railroads. If you do not have a matching railroad, but have a matching blank side, you can match them, but you won't be able to place a locomotive. If you have a tile that matches, you must place that tile. 
If you cannot make a legal match, then you have to pass. Once each player has placed their city tile or passed, players will begin delivering goods. To deliver a good, simply move one of the placed goods to a different city tile via any existing link. Once the good has been delivered, remove that cube and place it on the table. When you deliver goods, you will gain 1 to 3 points and increase the stock value for the railroad used. If you were the first person to deliver that color of good, you will gain 3 points. If you were the second person, you will gain 2 points. If it was already delivered two or more times, you will gain one point. If you deliver goods using a link that you do not own, the owner of that link will score two points. Each time a railroad is used, its stock value will increase. Move the corresponding stock value marker up one point on the stock value board. Once all of the goods have been delivered, place the delivered good cubes back into the bag. The end game begins when any player places their last city tile. Complete all phases of the current round. Now, it's time to score. Each player will score their stock tiles based on the value the stock has on the stock value track. For example, I have two Illinois Central stocks that are worth 6 points each, so I will gain 12 points for these tiles. Whoever has the most points wins! In the case of a tie, the player with the highest valued stock wins. If a tie persists, keep comparing stocks until a single winner is determined. And that's Railroad Rivals.